So far we've looked at finding the exact area under a curve using a limit, and we've also found a connection between integration and differentiation. So in this video we're going to look at how we find an area using the antiderivative. Uh, so we want to find this area under this curve, negative x squared plus 4 from negative 2 to 2. Before we do that, let's look at the general case. So let's say we have a function y equals f of x, and we want the area under y from a to some variable upper boundary x. And I'm using y here because one of the boundaries is x, and we don't want to get that confused with the input of the function. Okay, so what is this going to be? Well, we know uh, that for continuous functions, they're equal to a derivative, and the integral is equal to an antiderivative. So we can say here that this area is equal to some antiderivative of f of x. Let's call that capital F of x plus c. Uh, now, this represents all possible antiderivatives of f of x. We know all antiderivatives will differ only by a constant. That's why we add the plus c there. We don't exactly know what this antiderivative will be. Okay, so we could have this area if we can solve for c, and we can solve for c uh, using a clever step here. We can ask, what is the area from a to a under y? Uh, the area under a single point on the curve will be zero, and this is equal to f of a plus c. This gives us an equation to solve for c in terms of capital F. So capital F of a plus c is equal to zero, so therefore c equals negative f of a. And now we can ask for a specific area under the curve. So rather than a variable upper boundary, we can say we want the area from a to b. And now I'm going to use f of x because we've changed that boundary. So the area from a to b under f of x is equal to f of b subtract or plus c, which is subtract f of a. And this is the other part of the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, that allows you to find areas under curves. So let's have a look at our example now using this idea. So we want the area under f of x. So the area uh, from negative 2 to 2 under negative x squared plus 4. Okay, so what does this process look like? Firstly, we find the antiderivative of this function. So we use the steps we looked at when we were looking at indefinite integrals. So we add 1 to the power or the exponent uh, and divide by that exponent. And we put this we put this antiderivative in square brackets. So this is negative x cubed on 3 plus 4x. And then we put the boundaries on the right hand side of the square bracket. So negative 2 to 2. Okay, this is to indicate you've found the antiderivative now. And the next step is to input the boundaries. So f of b is f of uh, 2. So substituting in 2, we get negative 8 on 3 plus 8. And then we subtract uh, the function substituting in negative 2. So negative 2 cubed is negative 8 and then negative negative 8 is going to be positive 8 on 3, uh, take 8. And then we just evaluate this sum. So negative 8 on 3, take 8 on 3. Okay, you do the, the calculations, and you should get uh, 32 on 3, or 10 and 2 thirds. So this area under this curve from negative 2 to 2 is 10 and 2 thirds, and you can kind of eyeball this if you want. So you could draw a rectangle larger than the area. So the height here is 4. So this rectangle has a width of 4 and a height of 4. So that area is 16. And then you could draw a rectangle smaller. So let's say we went with the width of 2. Um, so let's say this was negative 1 to 1. And the height there, if we plug in 1, we get 3. So it's that area of that rectangle is 2 times 3, which is 6. Okay, it's a pretty wide margin, but at least that area is within that. And it seems reasonable, at least with a quick approximation. So 
Uh, there you go, that is the process. So let's have a look at a few more examples so you get the hang of this. Here we're looking for the definite integral from one to two of this function. And if you have a, a, a term that you can't exactly straight away see what the, the antiderivative is, you can rewrite it again. So just write it as two x to the negative three plus three x, if that makes it easier for you. And then we find the antiderivative. So we add one to the exponent, negative two, divide. So this becomes negative x to the negative two. Adding one to x here is two, dividing by two, we get three on two x squared. And we write the boundaries again on the right hand side. Then we evaluate them at the boundary. So substitute two in, uh, two, this will be like negative one and four, plus three on two multiplied by four, uh, four divided by two is two, so that would be plus six, and then subtract the uh, function at the lower boundary, so substituting one in, we get negative one uh, plus three on two, and then we just evaluate this sum. Uh, so this would be five and three quarters, and negative one plus one and a half is a half, so this would be subtract a half, three quarters take a half, that is five and a quarter. Next one, uh, this is a six, so this is the indefinite integral from three to six of x take three on x to the power of two. Here, it makes sense to expand the brackets first, so uh, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this will be x squared three times three on x is just three, so this will be x squared takes six plus nine on x squared, which I'll actually write as nine x to the negative two. Okay, and then we can evaluate the antiderivative. So adding one to the exponent, you know the steps by now, hopefully. And here we get negative one, so this becomes negative x to the negative one. And then we write the boundaries on the right hand side substituting them in. Um, this is probably easier if we write it like, let's do some uh, scratch notes over here. This would be two cubed multiplied by um, three cubed, I meant to write, three cubed, divided by three, so this becomes two cubed times three squared. So eight times nine is easier than 216 divided by three in my opinion. So we can then do eight times nine, 72, subtract 36, uh, nine on six, we can write as three on two, then substitute the lower boundary in, three cubed on three is, uh, is nine, take 18, subtract nine divided by three is three. Then evaluating the sum, 36 take one and a half is uh, 34 and a half, 34 and a half. Subtract uh, negative nine take three, negative 12. Uh, that would be plus 12. So then we get uh, 46 and a half. And the last one, this is an example where we don't know a boundary. So we know the what the, the value of the integral, but we don't know the boundary, so we have to find that. Um, so let's start by evaluating this antiderivative. Uh, so let's write it as x to the power of negative half. And then if we add one and divide by that exponent, that's going to be two x to the half from one to k. Substituting in k, we get two root k subtract uh, two, square root of one is just one, and then this is equal to three. Adding two to both sides, we get two root k equal to five, root k equal to five on two, and k equal to squaring both sides, 25 on four. Okay, so that was a, a few examples of definite integrals. I uh, hope you found that useful. Please leave a like if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.